Talking with the experts. In episode 569, learn how to achieve success without stress. Billy Sharp shares tips on balancing goals with well-being. In the world we live in, everything moves so fast. And if you aren't willing to make a decision, people are making those decisions around you and they're moving ahead of you. So you really need to be decisive and just own it. Just this is the decision I've made and go with it because innovation thrives in those spaces. And there's a lot of times when, because I do business coaching and people come to me and they'll say, oh, but you know, if if my business starts to boom, then I don't have the staff for this. And I'm like, you're trying to solve problems that aren't even there yet. Like just solve the problems you already have. Solve that problem when you get to it. Because you're going to face numerous amounts of problems along the way that you couldn't have even anticipated were going to occur. So there's no point in creating a plan for something that hasn't even occurred. Talking with the experts. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello, welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com.au. Talking with the Experts is all about business, by business owners, for business owners. You can find it on all good podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. Today my guest is Billy Sharp and Billy is going to be sharing with us how to be successful without the stress. Now Billy is the catalyst for success with a decade of upper management experience and a reputation as an award finalist. Billy has earned her stripes in entrepreneurship. Alongside her husband, she manages five successful businesses from their home office where innovation thrives, balancing entrepreneurship with parenthood and caregiving for her father-in-law. Billy excels in time management and prioritizing work-life balance. Billy is your local small business expert. Welcome, Billy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. How did you get started in, in business? Um, I think originally before I went out on my own, I was offered a job in grade 12 in, in the, at the end of high school, um, just working in reception. And I'd already done a, a diploma of business through TAFE while I was in high school. Um, I never intended to go into business, to be quite honest. It was just something that once I got into it, I loved it so much And I love that there's, especially in small business, you have to wear so many different hats. So all of the time you're just doing different things, learning new things all of the time. No day is the same. And I absolutely love that. Um, And then five years ago, I decided to go out on my own. Um, And it was obviously the best decision I've ever made. Um, I started with one business. If you had have told me then uh, that I would be where I am today, I probably would have laughed at you, to be very honest. Um, but it's been an incredible journey uh, and just learning so much about myself and other things along the way as well. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting that you say that you learned a lot about yourself because a lot of people go into business and they don't um, they don't have a, a, a set why. They just go into business thinking, yeah, I'm going to make lots of money, um, you know, I'm not, but they don't reach their ideal clients, they don't. They don't know how to go about, you know, structuring their business in such a way is that they're attracting those types of people that, will, you know, that will make them that money. And I think that's a really good point because I never actually went into business to make money, which is a really crazy concept at the end of the day. Um, I've always had a really burning desire to help um, and especially help people that maybe didn't have the same Um, start to life, um, more disadvantaged people. So when I was at school, what I really wanted to do, my dream job was to become a plastic surgeon and travel to third world countries to help disadvantaged children. That was like what I really, really wanted to do. And it's so interesting now that all of these years later, I do nothing like that. But at the core of every single thing that we do is we help people. 
And one of the businesses we own is a cleaning and yard maintenance business. And in that business, it gives us a really beautiful opportunity to give back. And we create jobs for single mums, mums that want to get back into the workforce after having children, women that have been in DV situations. Um, and being able to support that part of the community is such a beautiful thing. We make very little money from our cleaning business. It's about $3 an hour profit after all the bills are paid. <laughs> so it's, it's really nothing. It's, it's honestly not a lot at all, but it's such a rewarding business to own. So for me, I, I have learned so much about myself and what really is important to me. I always knew helping people was important, but I didn't realize how much of a change and impact I could have um, just little old me. But I guess that was the biggest thing that I've learned in this journey. Yeah, I, I feel the same. I, I didn't start my business to make money either. I just wanted to help people. And, um, you know, it's it's incredible how rewarding it is to be able to help somebody, uh, you know, when they're a bit challenged with, with life circumstances or even business circumstances. They, you know, just that little bit of a helping hand along the way to, to help them to be successful. Yeah, everybody, I'm not special. I was raised by a single mom in a very small country town. So I didn't, I wasn't given a lot. I've had to find opportunities where other people would not see opportunities at all. <laughs> and I've learned from that. Um, and just taking risks when other people wouldn't take risks. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I, um, Billy, I want to ask you about the five pillars of what makes a successful person. What What should they be focusing on? Yeah, so I think the one thing that we kind of need to disregard is balance. So we get told a lot about work-life balance and you need to have balance across family and relationships and you need balance and balance and balance. Um, I think after gaining my own version of success, but also talking with, I talk a lot with um, billionaires, like 100 millionaires, you know, really, really successful people. And one of the funniest things I think they all say is there is no balance, right? We There is no balance across everything. If you have balance, it basically means you're retired. Like you are at a point in your life where you, you have the same thing every day. So I think it's really important that firstly, stop striving to be what everybody else wants you to be, right? In society, there's so much pressure, especially as a mum and as a woman, to be the perfect mum, be the perfect housewife, be the perfect business person. There's so much pressure. So you have to disregard that and really look at what's perfect for you. What's your perfect? Don't worry about what everybody else's perfect is. What is your version of perfect? And then look at the pillars in your life that surround yourself, your business, your health, your relationship, like with your husband or your significant other or your best friend, because that person is really important in your life um, and your family. They're the things that I look at individually um, and work towards individually. So if I look at my health, for example, I like to say I would rate like a 10 is like athlete performance health. I don't want to be an athlete. Okay, like I have no desire. I hate running. I have no desire to get up and become an athlete every single day. But I do want to move good, feel good, have lots of energy. I want nice skin. You know, I want normal things out of health, what I would consider normal. Um, so I probably really only want to be like a seven or an eight out of 10 when it comes to health. But right now, I'm probably like a five. Like I'm not committing to exercise every day. I'm not getting up and walking. I'm not doing anything really other than my diet to benefit my health. So then I would look at that area of my life and be like, okay, well, if I want to be an eight or a seven, what do I need to do to change here? Like what, that's my version of perfect. So am I willing to commit and how much am I willing to commit to change? Because there's all good to say, Hey, I want to change and I want to commit. And I think what I see a lot of people do and all aspects of life is they say, I want to commit and I want to change. And they just go zero to a hundred. Like <laughs> nothing sticks when you go zero to a hundred in any aspect. So what you really need to do is just small little things. Like maybe it is exercising once a week, reading one chapter a day of a self-help book. It's the small little changes in your life that make big change. Absolutely. Now I, I agree that, um, you know, society places so much burden on us to be the perfect person and you know what is their idea of perfect may not necessarily be our idea of perfect um you know 
and you're right about committing to, you know, exercise and diet and, and all of those other things. And, you know, sometimes people are a bit introverted. They don't want to, you know, have to go out to all these parties or meetings or networking events, um, you know, and they're happy just to stay home. Um, so, you know, per, what is perfect? You know, I, I, I've yet to see a, a perfect person uh, be perfect. Yeah, because it's your version of perfect. And it's the same that I see as success. So for six, like success is something different to everyone. And that's what's going to really motivate you in the movement, right? To be successful is what is your version of success? What does success look like for you? My goal is to be a billionaire, right? Now that's not going to be everybody's goal. And I get that. And that's not for everyone. And to to sit there and be like, I want to be a billionaire. It's kind of crazy because the amount of effort that's involved is another thing. So you've got to also look at your goal and be like, hey, Am I going to put in enough effort to reach that type of success that I'm looking for? Because sometimes success can just be financial freedom, which means having enough money in the bank account for your bills, to support your family, to live, you know, work a few days a week. That could be your version of success. And that is perfectly fine because that's what you want. And you that's where you have to really not let all of these external pressures change what you want, okay? If, if that is what you're okay with, that is what you're okay with. When I tell people I want to be a billionaire, they literally look at me like I'm insane. And that is totally fine because that's not their version of success, even my husband is like, that's insane. Like who has that goal in life? And I was like, well, I do. I didn't, but I do. And that's and that's just it. So when I work every single day, I'm working because in my opinion, money is power and power is real change. And that's my goal. It's not because I want to fly around first class and I already do all of those things. I could stop right now if I wanted to, right? For me, it's all about the money is power and power is change. And I want to leave this world having made real change. Yeah, no, I agree with you there. Um, I, I want to know, ask you about how can we avoid, you know, decision paralysis? You know, once we've made our decision to, you know, have this goal and to be our version of perfect, how can we avoid that, that decision paralysis? Yeah, so I love this question. We actually play a really fun game in our house called Worst Case Scenario. Um, and basically how it works, the concept behind it is very psychological based so that you've played out the worst case scenario in your brain. So you may, you come to the decision quickly and I'll give you a really good example. When we bought the cleaning business, um, basically what happened was there was a post on Facebook and a lady saying, um, I have this cleaning business and I'm over it and I want to sell it. It needs to be sold or every, like I'm closing it down. Everyone loses their job. And it was just in our local community. We were on the drive to pick up our daughter from school. And at the time, my husband had just handed in his resignation at work because he was still working full time. So he would just handed in his resignation. And we were driving to pick our daughter up. She School is about 15 minute drive. So we get in the car and I tell him, hey, there's this sale on this clean business, blah, blah, blah. I think we should buy it. And he says to me, No. <laughs> Why, why would we buy a cleaning business? And I said, well, I've used them in the past. I think they're really good. And um, the staff are all going to lose their job. And he looked at me and he said, that is not our responsibility. Like that is like, why do you feel like this is your thing? And I said to him, look, at the end of the day, I feel like we, we could really do this. We kept talking about it in the car. And then I said, well, what's the worst case scenario, right? The worst case scenario is I buy this business I put in about $100,000 of our own money to grow and expand it and it doesn't work out. It just, it it falls flat. We make nothing, like it's terrible. We lose $100,000, like it, like that's it, right? The worst case is we've lost $100,000. We've also learned a lot of lessons along the way. And fortunately we can not, like $100,000 is going to hurt. I'm not going to lie, but it's also not going to send me bankrupt. So I can be like, okay, it is what it is. And he looked at me and he said, does it matter what what I say here? Because in his mind, he's looking at $100,000 going, um, that's a brand new shed. That's this. That's like, we could own this car. We could. <laughs> and I'm just like, it is what it is. Like, like we would go, we would forego those things if we lost that money. And he said, does it matter what I say? Are you going to buy the business anyway? And I said, 
Yeah, because in my mind, the worst case is we lose $100,000 and your shed's delayed like a few years. It is what it is. And he just went, yeah, okay. So literally within a 15-minute drive, we had decided to buy this cleaning business and we did buy that cleaning business and we closed in two weeks. So it was before June 30 because I wanted to start fresh on July 1st. Now, when we bought that business, it had three staff. It now has 15 staff and we've only owned it just over 18 months. And our goal there is to franchise the business out. So like, yes, it wasn't, it didn't all fall apart, but it can. Okay. And once you've played it out in your head, you already know the worst case. And if you know that sometimes I've played out things in my head and it does end up in bankruptcy in our house and what would we have left and all of those types of things. And then I have to say to myself, am I willing to risk all of that? And if I'm not, what am I willing to commit to? What What's my happy medium, right? So, and that's how we make really, really quick decisions in our businesses, in our life, in our personal life, everything. Yeah, I, I am, I'm a bit like that. You know, I dive in first and, and think about the consequences later. Uh, so, you know, um, what, what does Richard Branson say? Do it and work out the details afterwards or something. That's yeah. pretty much me. That's what I do as well. And, you know, it's got me into, into, uh, financial difficulties at times and and you know but I work my way through them but I, I don't regret making those decisions because at the time that to me they seemed quite logical and uh you know and I yeah and, and I just keep moving forward with with those things and you know sometimes even if you think about the worst case scenario it, it doesn't always um, work out the way you think it does and sometimes you have to sit back and just just uh, think about it and you know making quick decisions can sometimes be the most the best decision to, to to move forward i think making quick decisions is really important in business because in the world we live in everything moves so fast and if you aren't willing to make a decision people are making those decisions around you and they're moving ahead of you so you really need to be decisive and just own it just this is the decision i've made and go with it because innovation thrives in those spaces. And there's a lot of times when, because I do business coaching and people come to me and they'll say, oh, but you know, if, if my business starts to boom, then I don't have the staff for this. And I'm like, you're trying to solve problems that aren't even there yet. Like just solve the problems you already have. Solve that problem when you get to it, because you're going to face numerous amounts of problems along the way that you couldn't have even anticipated were going to occur so there's no point in creating a plan for something that hasn't even occurred yet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I totally 100% agree, agree with that. I think, you know, don't don't make up scenarios in your head that, that probably won't ever happen and, you know, and, and just go with the flow and, and do what you feel is right in your gut. I think gut feelings are, uh, uh, it's how I live most of my life is when I have to make a decision, I go with my gut. You know, it's like if I like somebody, if I if my gut says there's something wrong, then usually there is. So um, yeah, I that's how I I flow and 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 I'm and I'm still here. So I know I haven't died or anything. So no, exactly. And I'm the same. I listen to my intuition all the time. If something doesn't feel right to me, I don't do it. Um, and, and that plays out in worst case scenario too, when I'm playing it out in my head, because I'm going through all that and it's not feeling okay with me. And I've just recently signed on a group of coaches that I'm going to be working with personally in 2025. And that required a lot of interviews and a lot of talking to a lot of different people. And sometimes I would just get off the call and think I was, I really liked that person. And then, but at the end of the call, I just didn't like them anymore. I was like, that is not the person I'm going to be working with. And you've really got to listen to that. And if you get off a call, especially in the coaching industry, and it feels ick, it is ick. Don't do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's the same as clients too. I mean, a lot of times, you know, you, you, they seem nice, you know, they, they filled out the form, they sound really interesting. And then when you get on a call with them, you find out, mm, you know, there's something a little bit about them that, you know, doesn't sit right. You know, you don't have to take them on as a client. Um, you know, if it doesn't feel right for you and you don't, you don't feel that synergy, then, you know, don't do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Billy, you know, what about, um, you know, why we should focus on um, ourselves and why is that so important? 
So most people that I deal with are in small business. Um, and if they're not, they, and to me, small business is the amount of employees you have, not the amount of revenue you have. And if you're not in a small business, even at the very, very top, um, if you're like, I know a CEO of a $50 million company, you are the most important thing, right, in that business. And if without you, what is there? What what does the business have? And I'm somebody that actually doesn't work in many of my businesses at all. I work on them. But that innovation comes from me still every single day. So without you, what does the business have? And I'm sure you've realized as well that the people around you are happier when you're happier. So finding time for yourself is really, really, really important. And it's not just about doing the things that everybody else tells you that you should be doing. So going for a walk or going to get a facial or getting a massage. It's actually those things that you want to do, finding time for yourself that you go, oh, I actually really want to do this thing and I'm going to commit to doing it. And for me at the moment, um, we went camping recently and for the first hour of every day we were reading because we had no phone reception and it's so funny because the same thing happens to me at home. I sit for an hour every morning, but I was just on my phone scrolling, reading different things. And I thought, I feel so much better after reading a book than I did on my phone. So when we came home, I just put that practice into place. Nothing could change. I just switched my phone for a book for an hour every morning. And I'm feeling so much better to start my day and so much more motivated and ready not being dragged down by everybody else's problems. I haven't got to my emails yet. I'm not, you know, replying to a million messages and all of those things. So it's about finding what you really want to do. Yeah, it's really, I think it's important to to uh, listen to, again, your gut. I mean, if it feels right, then it is right. If it doesn't feel, you know, it doesn't align with, with your, um, with, how you want to live your life then you know don't do it it, it it's really that, that simple and you know we have all these great gurus you know that that are around have made billions of dollars or millions of dollars you know it's espousing all these great things that you should be doing but basically it's got to be right for what for you um at that, that particular moment and you know don't go um doing something that just because some guru has said it yeah, exactly. And it's funny because like I am literally surrounded by billionaires and the one thing that they, so I'm quite young in those circles, very young in those circles, in fact, and most of them didn't start um, building their careers till their late thirties or early forties even. And one thing that they see in me, which I didn't realize myself, which I naturally had was I didn't care what other people thought from a very young age. And I just just did my own thing. I've always just done that. So I already had a leg up. And now I'm realizing for people, a lot of the time, they're really struggling with caring so much. You, and you might not even realize you care, but I would sit down and look at it and be like, hey, I bought this house in this suburb. Why? Like what, what made you buy that house in that suburb? And I, I was guilty of it. I I did. I bought a house, built a house in a suburb that was on 400 square meters in this really nice beachy location, perfect home, um, all of these things to realize that it was nothing that I actually wanted at mm. all. Like I just spent all this money for everybody else's dream. Um, and now I live on acreage <laughs> in a shitty 1980s house, 30 minutes from Brisbane CBD. And it's my perfect lifestyle we homeschool, we run our businesses, we do everything everybody tells us we shouldn't be doing because that's our version of what we want. Yeah, I think, you know, you've got to follow your heart, you've got to follow your own dreams and you've just got to tell the world, you know, just mind their own business sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Billy, you know, where can people find you if they want to work with you or or uh, find out more about, about what you can offer them? Yeah, honestly, just come on over and follow us on um, Facebook. So just Billy Sharp, B-I-L-L-I-E-S-H-A-R-P. That's I only have a page where you can follow me or you can join a free group or you can add me as a friend. That's I only have one Facebook profile. I'm what you see is what you get. And I share a lot of tips and tricks and how I'm doing things in the moment in those places. And I would highly recommend that as well. 
Um, I'm not 100% sure when this podcast will be live, but we are actually running a competition at the moment. I own a marketing agency as well. And um, if from the 1st of October to the 25th of December, there's a few ways to gain entry. And it's um, you'll get 12 months free marketing, which will be about $30,000 in value. So it's a great opportunity. Um, but if you're interested in that, just come and find me on Facebook and I can send you the details. Wonderful. That sounds absolutely wonderful. Billy, um, do you have any words of wisdom that you'd like to share? Just be you, honestly. That That's the best thing you can ever be is the best version of yourself. Turn up for you and only you and everything else will fall into place. Great words. I think that's great advice. Billy, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us here on Talking With The Experts. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Talking With The Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time.